2021, losing it and not alone. I found an article in The Atlantic this morning written by Ellen Cushing. It's called Late Stage Pandemic is Messing with Your Brain, and I think it encapsulates the mental state of many. And so I'd like to read most of it here and then summarize. It goes exactly like this. I first became aware that I was losing my mind in late December. It was a Friday night, the start of my 40th pandemic weekend. Hours and hours with no work to distract me, and outside temperatures prohibitive of anything other than staying in. I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to fill the time. What did I used to do on weekends? I asked my boyfriend, like a soap opera amnesiac. He couldn't really remember either. Since then, I can't stop noticing all the things I'm forgetting. Sometimes I grasp at a word or a name. Sometimes I walk into the kitchen and find myself bewildered as to why I am there. At one point during the writing of this article, I absentmindedly cleaned my glasses with nail polish remover. Other times, the forgetting feels like someone is taking a chisel to the bedrock of my brain, prying everything loose. I've started keeping a list of questions, remnants of a past life that I now need a beat or two to remember, if I can remember at all. What time do parties end? How tall is my boss? What does a bar smell like? Are babies heavy? Does my dentist have a mustache? On what street was the good sandwich place near work? The one that toasted its bread? How much does a movie popcorn cost? What do people talk about when they don't have a global disaster to talk about all the time? You have to wear high heels the whole night? It's more baffling than distressing most of the time. Everywhere I turn, the fog of forgetting has crept in. A friend of mine recently confessed that the morning routine he'd comfortably maintained for a decade, wake up before seven, shower, dress, get on the subway, now feels unimaginable on a literal level. He cannot put himself back there. Another has forgotten how to tie a tie. A coworker isn't sure her toddler remembers what it's like to go shopping in a store. The comedian Kylie Brakeman made a joke video of herself attempting to recall pre-pandemic life, the mania flashing across her face. You know what I miss is, like, those night restaurants that served alcohol? What were those called? She asks. And there were those big men outside who would check your credit card to make sure you were 41? Jen George, a community college teacher from Cape Elizabeth, Maine, told me she is losing her train of thought in the middle of a sentence more and more often. Meanwhile, her third grader, who is attending in-person school, keeps leaving his books, papers, and lunch at home. Ini Ekulu, a 19-year-old student from Ireland, says she has found herself forgetting how to do things she used to do on a regular basis, swiping her bus pass, paying for groceries. Recently, she came across a photo of a close friend she hadn't seen since lockdown and found that she couldn't recognize her. It wasn't like I had forgotten her existence, she told me. But if I had bypassed her on the street, I wouldn't have said hi. Rachel Cowart, a research psychologist in Ottawa, used to have a standing Friday night dinner with her neighbors and went completely blank when one of them recently mentioned it. It was really shocking, Cowart told me. This was something I really loved and had done for a long time and I had totally forgotten. This is the fog of late pandemic, and it's brutal. In the spring, we joked about the before times, but they were still within reach, easily accessible in our shorter term memories. In the summer and fall, with restrictions loosening and temperatures rising, we were able to replicate some of what life used to be like, at least in an uh, adulterated form. Outdoor drinks, a day at the beach, but now, in the cold, dark, featureless middle of our pandemic winter, we can neither remember what life was like before nor imagine what it'll be like after. To some degree, this is a natural adaptation. 
The sunniest optimist would point out that all this forgetting is evidence of the resilience of our species. Humans forget a great deal of what happens to us, and we tend to do it pretty quickly, after the first 24 hours or so. Our brains are very good at learning different things and forgetting the things that are not a priority, Tina Franklin, a neuroscientist at Georgia Tech, told me. As the pandemic has taught us new habits and made old ones obsolete, our brains have essentially put actions like taking the bus and going to restaurants in deep storage and place social distancing and coughing into our elbows near the front of the closet. When our habits change back, presumably, so will our recall. That's the good news. The pandemic is still too young to have yielded rigorous peer-reviewed studies about its effects on cognitive function. But the brain scientists I spoke with told me they can extrapolate based on earlier work about trauma, boredom, stress, and inactivity, all of which do a host of very bad things to a mammal's brain. We're all walking around with some mild cognitive impairment, said Mike Yasa, a neuroscientist at UC Irvine. Based on everything we know about the brain, two of the things that are really good for it are physical activity and novelty. A thing that's very bad for it is chronic and perpetual stress. Living through a pandemic, even for those who are doing so in relative comfort, is exposing to micro doses of unpredictable stress all the time, said Franklin, whose research has shown that stress changes the brain's regions that control executive function, learning, and memory. That stress doesn't necessarily feel like a panic attack or a bender or a sleepless night, though of course it can. Sometimes it feels like nothing at all. It's like a heaviness. Like you're waking up to more of the same, and it's never going to change, George told me when I asked what her pandemic anxiety felt like. Like wading through something thicker than water, maybe a tar pit. She misses the sound of voices. Prolonged boredom is, somewhat paradoxically, hugely stressful, Franklin said. Our brains hate it. What's very clear in the literature is that environmental enrichment, being outside of your home, bumping into people, commuting, all of these changes that we are collectively being deprived of is very associated with synaptic plasticity. The brain's inherent ability to generate new connections and learn new things, she said. In the 1960s, the neuroscientist Marion Diamond conducted a series of experiments on rats in an attempt to understand how environment affects cognitive function. Time after time, the rats raised in enriched cages, ones with toys and playmates, performed better at mazes. Ultimately, said Natasha Raja, a psychology professor at McGill University in Montreal, our winter of forgetting may be attributable to any number of overlapping factors. There's just so much going on. It could be the stress, it could be the grief, it could be the boredom, it could be depression, she said. Sounds pretty grim, doesn't it? The share of Americans reporting symptoms of anxiety disorder, depressive disorder, or both, roughly quadrupled from June 2019 to December 2020, according to a Census Bureau study released late last year. What's more, we simply don't know the long-term effects of collective sustained grief. Longitudinal studies of survivors of Chernobyl, 9-11, and Hurricane Katrina show elevated rates of mental health problems, in some cases lasting for more than a decade. You can read the rest of this article on The Atlantic, but my summary is this. Is the new normal of the world pressing in on you from all sides? Yes. Is it perfectly natural that you are feeling this way? According to doctors, also yes. But the bigger question is, should this be happening to you, given all that we know so far, and will it continue? There are still more fun and games to come, to be sure. For those of you who didn't see my prediction video from last year that covered all of this, please check out When a Plan Comes Together. My parting shot is this. You are not an unstable or irrational person if you feel that you are starting to lose your mind. Just remember that even though you are mostly alone, we're still in this together. Right? Mm -hmm.